Hello, my name is Catherine, and this is Ellie WebDev. This channel is dedicated to beginners and intermediates of the Elementor page builder for WordPress. Today's topic that trips up a lot of beginners is absolute positioning. So I want to let you know what, my, what tools I use. I use the local WP software that is free that creates an environment for WordPress and Elementor to work on your computer. I use the Chrome browser. I use Elementor Pro. And I only use one theme, which is the Elementor Hello theme. So let's get into absolute positioning today. So on my screen, I have um, a, just a little thing I pre-built and we're gonna build it along and show you how I got these numbers to show up in the corners that break outside of the barrier of the of the little card here that has a icon, a title, and a paragraph. So I am using the newest feature of containers. So we'll just move along with that. And so what I'm going to do, we have, we actually have two different containers here. We've got one that's 30% and one that is 70%. So let's start there. So I'm going to create a two section column. Uh, yeah, column, container. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some visual space. I'm going to go up to uh, advanced and I'm going to add uh, to the top of it 50 pixels. All right, so there we can have a little separation. And so I'm going to force the first container, not column, because that word has just gone out the window. Um, so the first container, I'm going to edit the container and I am going to force it to 30%, three zero, and it got smaller and you would think that the other side would go to 70, but it doesn't. You have to force it as well. We'll go to edit container because it was created at 50%. So we will just go 70%. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the image in the background. So I'm going to right click and edit the container. I'm going to add it as a background image. So I'm going to go up to style and background type of classic. And I'm going to choose the image of the mountain scene with the clouds. And now I'm going to tell this image how I want it to fill this space. I want it to be center, center, and I want the size to be cover. And you're saying, oh, it's squished in there. Give it time. It'll fill the space when you put everything else in there. Alrighty. So in order to build out each one of these little card containers that have f actually four items in there, because the number itself is an item as well, um, we need to add a container. So the best thing to do is just build one and then replicate the others. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to come up here to all of our widgets and I'm going to go to container. And I'm going to drag and drop another container inside of this other container. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and edit it and make sure that it is the content width is full width because this is the only way you can make it work to force a width. I'm going to make sure it is percentage and I'm going to say, mm, I'm not going to give it 50% and I will, I'll explain along the way is why I'm not going to make it 50%. I'm going to make it 46%. And if we need to make it bigger and tweak it, we will do that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it that gray background color. So I'm going to right click, edit the container, go to style, uh, background type, and I'm going to click on this uh, red slash, which means there's no background. And I'm going to choose the color picker and give it just a light gray, something similar to that. All right, that's good. And the next thing we want to do is we have a uh, rounded edge. So let's go in and make that happen. We'll go edit the container. 
and we will go to border and we'll go to border radius and I will give it 15. I do believe 15 was the number. All right. And so now we'll drop in our items, which is an icon. So I'll grab an icon and I'll drop it in and I will grab a title. Whoops. Grab a title, a header, and I will grab a paragraph or a text editor. And there we go. There is our first one. So now I will add some padding to that container. So I'll make sure that I have the right container selected. I will go up to advanced and I will add 20 pixels of padding all the way around. There we go. And so now we've got pretty much what we need. And I'm going to add the number here. All I'm going to do is just add another title in there. And I'm going to add it above the star. And I'm going to change the text to just the number one. And then I'm going to change the text color to text color. All right. So we need to add the background color to the number one. So I'll go to advanced and I will go to background and I'll grab a background type of a default color that's already in my global colors. And we got a little problem. In number one, it's not circular and two, it's rectangular. So Here's, here's where we have to make some changes. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced and we're going to go to the layout and the width we are going to say right now, it is a default width of which says fill the space with the element. We don't want to do that. We want to fill it or change it to an inline auto. Now, Prior to containers, you would have seen a change. Now with containers, you don't see a change. So we'll go to the next step and we will convert it into absolute positioning. So when we go to position and change it to absolute, that's when you see that it conforms to the inline of the boundary of itself, basically. So Here's where it gets tricky and here's where you're just going to have to play in order to get something that looks like a circle. So we'll go to padding and I'll release the link so that I can individually um, set the padding and I'm going to go, mm, let's say five pixels on the top and five pixels on the bottom and let's say 12 on the right and 12 on the left. Okay, so we got pretty much a, a square. We're going to go to the uh, border. Yep, we're going to go to the border and we're going to go to the border radius and I'm just going to give it a willy nilly number of let's say 20. And that just looks like a circle, doesn't it? All right. So we got what we want. Now we have to go back to the absolute positioning and move it around. So I'm going to go back to layout and right down here where it says position absolute, we have some controls. And so here on the horizontal position, it is pushed to the left. Well, we want it over to the right. So I'm going to click right and it's at the top. So we don't need to switch the, the vertical orientation. And so now we just need to play with the offset sliders in a pixel value. So I'm going to go to, oops, wrong way. We'll go into the negative numbers, about negative 20 and offset. I'll give it some negative to go up. All right. That looks good. Perfectly. All right. So we pretty much have what we need with the number. And so what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate. We've got one. Now we're going to duplicate it. So I'm going to make sure I have the right container. 
this container right here and I'm going to right click and duplicate and I'll find the container again and duplicate that makes three and I'm going to right click one more time and duplicate and you're saying, Catherine, that's all well and good, but um, they're on top of each other and we want them side by side. Well, if you follow along in some of the uh, other container videos, you'll see those up above. I'll put a little card to help you out with containers and positioning and how to get containers to flow one side beside each other if you need a little more detail. But we'll go ahead and uh, work with these. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the parent container. And so that parent container is, I do believe this one, that is the grandparent container. We don't want that one. We want to find the container that starts to have all four, there it is, all four of the other containers uh, that, that contain each one of these items. So that is the correct container right there. So we need to make changes to that container about how these items flow. So I'm going to go to items over here. And first of all, we need to change the direction because right now everything is being forced straight up and down. We want it to go left and right as a row. And you're saying, that's all well and good, but I don't want all four of them. I just need two side by side. All right. This is where we wrap the containers. Voila. There we go. And the reason why they're wrapping is because we've given each one of them about, about 50%. So only two will fit side by side because if it's like 46 and 46, that's close to 100. If there's not enough space, then the third one's going to wrap to the next line. So that's great. So we're a little squished over here next to the image. So I'm going to make sure that I go back to the container and that contains all four of the other containers, the children containers. And I'm going to go to advanced and I'll go to padding. And I'm only going to give the left side 20 pixels. Okay. So if you followed along, uh, you are doing great. The one point I want to add is that there is on this layout inside of the container, there is... If I can find it, if you, you got to go back to layout and to the items, there is a default element gap. And that is how we are getting these containers to have 20 pixels separated between each one of them. So if I force this to be zero, that's when they all start touching each other. And children don't like touching each other, so we're going to have to put some gap between them. So let's add 20, and that's where we get 20 on the left and 20 in between each one. And there probably is a little bit more of a 20-pixel gap here, but we're okay. We're okay. If you really want to fill the space, you can go back to each one of these containers and force it until they break. So if I go 47% and I right click and copy that and I paste it here, paste the style, 47% for both of them works. Now the 20 pixels is additive, meaning it's going to take away from the 100% width of 50 and 50 for each one of your items. Just wanted to let you know that. So now all we have to do is renumber. I will click on the circle and I will number this two. I will click on this item, make it three, and I will click the last number and make it four. So I hope that this has helped you 
learn all about absolute positioning 